Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, the FCCPO, is displeased with hospitals which often demand police reports before admitting emergency patients, saying they are not only violating natural laws, but also the patient's bill of rights. Speaking at the public inquiry held few years ago in respect to the death of Ms. Murad Dion Balogun, a Lagos who was allegedly refused treatment by a hospital on account of not possessing a police report. Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Babatunde Irekera, won hospital disease from actions which would portray them as killers instead of lifesavers. He said that Nigerians need to know that no emergency patient needs police report to be treated, urging relatives of such patients to always promptly report hospitals that do not comply. Also speaking at the public hearing, Lagos State Attorney General and Commission for Justice, Moyoshure Onigbanjo, said compulsory treatment and care for victims of gunshots Act 2017 provides for compulsory treatment and care of victims of gunshots. 28-year-old Murad Deon Balogun, a Lagos worker, was allegedly stabbed by armed robbers at Bagada area of Lagos while returning from work on December 2, 2019. She was allegedly denied treatment by a Lagos hospital because the police report was not presented by the Good Samaritans who came to her rescue. However, the hospital immediately debunked the claim, saying that the two of his doctors assessed the disease before referring her to the Bagada General Hospital for surgery. And joining me live in the studio now is legal practitioner Sandra Alex Egbero. Thank you, Sandra, for joining us still. And also with us still is Benjamin Oloje Butu, a health practitioner. Thank you, doctor, for staying with us this Thank morning. Thank you very much. Now, I do know as a medical practitioner, um, it's part of your oath to save lives regardless. Yes. But we've seen an anomaly in the system. How do you react to this? So, um, anomaly correct. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's because of the um, um, conditions of services. One, some people say um, we're overwhelmed. Health, the health force is very overwhelmed in Nigeria, which is very true. WHO says we should have one doctor to 600 patients. We have one doctor to 6,000 to about 10,000 patients already. So people are overwhelmed. And the skill set is, is actually dwindling. People don't have some skill set to even attend to emergencies anymore. So I think it's, it, it culminates to that. The, the workforce is very, very handicapped about um, effectiveness and also the skill set. Are there exceptions? Should there be exceptions? So, no, there shouldn't be, and, and the law says so. The law, is, the law, is, you know, the, the law, and we, 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 need to, we need to keep telling because ourselves. I do ask you because the emphasis seems to be on gunshot. In yes. the case of um, the, the unfortunate case, she was, she was stabbed. Yes. You know, so should there be exceptions? So, so, so people, people, people sometimes don't understand the kind of injuries. And, you know, until, until there's an examination, you can't be sure if it is stab injury or it's a gunshot injury, you can't be sure. The, the same, the, what, what a gunshot injury will give to you might be the same, the same thing that the stab wound will give to you until, until you see it. So it's important, the, the, even the, law, the laws have to be very, very clear. The law of 2017 talks only about gunshot injuries. Yes. The law of 2015 talks about emergencies. And they have not been able to, to converge or to be able to put the laws together. And say, okay, is it general emergencies? Is it just gunshots? And, and, and stab injuries, is it an robbery attack, is it people that have comas, people that have LTEs, if you have a road traffic accident, what do you define as what is as emergency? It's, it, has to be, it has to be clear. Yeah. And most times, people that, people that write the laws and an accident, they're not medical people, they don't understand what they are writing. They just sit in the space and just, uh, just say, I think, I think we should write this. So it's important we should be able to make the laws properly and, dec and decipher what really the emergency cases should be. Now, Sandra, I'm going to come to you. It's made so much emphasis about the law. Now, yeah. there seems to be, there's so much dichotomy. How, how do we bring, to bring this together to, to at least let it make sense, let it be all encompassing? First of all, I would um, debunk the fact that he said that um, the people who draft the laws are not um, basically medical practitioners. Most of them are not. Before any law is being, first of all, drafted, passes within the first house, the second house, and gets to the point of signing into, into law, it goes through several stages. Yes. And at every of the stage, medical practitioners are very much involved. Mm -hmm. There's also the place for the public to add their views yes. on you know, such laws. So you can't tell me that medical practitioners are not involved, especially when it has something to do with the health of an individual. What does the law say, Sandra? The law says, he rightly said that the law of 2015 addresses emergency cases. An emergency, it's, it's obvious to anybody what an emergency situation is. No, it's not obvious to everybody. It's not obvious, okay, so Doctor, I think- if a life, once the life is at risk, regardless, gunshot, regardless um, knife, stab, I mean, 
Yes. It, it, it so, could be as thin as so I mean. Somebody can be asthmatic. Yes. And as an attack, lying maybe on the queue, that's an emergency. That's an emergency, yes. So you shouldn't say emergency and, and make it look like just out, uh, just road traffic accident and wound injuries. Most of the time, people in Nigeria, the law makes you think like when there's a bleeding outside the body, that's when it's an emergency. That's the truth. That's a, if, even the support system of people around you. If you slump now, people leave you alone. They throw the power on you. They think it's just them, somebody following your family. Because they don't understand what they do. It's when they see blood outside your body that they know it's an emergency. So it, what I'm saying is clearly, Sandra, is that the law has to be very clear. What are these emergencies? emergencies. Let it be stated. Sick. Medical emergencies, surgical emergencies, obstetrics emergencies, and stuff like that. So people should know that these emergencies fall under get into the hospital and get care. Don't, don't focus only on gunshot injuries because people keep just thinking about, that's why a lot of doctors are afraid because they say, they say some gunshot injuries might be what? Might be ambrogon injuries. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, I agree with and you that. You cannot say the cause of death until you do an autopsy. All they're saying is now, all, 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 everything you say now is just, is, just, is just conjecture. You only find the cause of death when you do an autopsy. And when there's a, when there's a gunshot or I'm not by, um, an Amber case, it's a corona case. You can't get, you can't just say, I want to know the cause of death. So we must be able to identify clearly what emergencies are. Very important. Now, the federal government says any hospital that refuses any one treatment without police reports should be reported. Should we be going that way? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think there are a lot of underreported cases of, you know, medical, I would like to use the word medical negligence, in the sense that um, families of victims would rather, you know, accept their faith as it's happened. Especially those who are, you know, not well um, enlightened, they're not aware of the law. So there is also the issue of public awareness of these laws. The law of 2015 attacks emergencies, as he has said, and it is clear that, okay, yes, there's a void existing in that particular law that does not clearly define what emergency is. But I believe as a medical practitioner, you should be able to see a case and determine that this is an emergency situation needing my um, urgent, in, urgent attention yes. or not. In the, case of, in the case of the, the young lady, she had lost a lot of blood. And my question is, why was there a mention of police reports in the first place? If the issue was on capacity, being that the, you know, just like you said, the hospital lacked, you know, personnel, the proper thing should have done. If proper first aid is not being able to, is, is not, um, you know, they're unable to administer first aid. Yeah. Refer the person to another hospital of competence. But mention, do you know what it takes to get an actual police report? That would mean carrying that victim to a police station. Police station would want to look for, you know, the suspect and, you know, inquire before issuing a police report. At that point, I think the, the patient has lost it already. Yeah. So inquiring about, you know, the primary cause of death, the primary cause of death might be, you know, the stab injury, the wound. The wound. But secondary, the doctors also have a role to play, I believe. Sandra Alex Egboro, legal practitioner, thank you very much for your contribution. And also Dr. Benjamin Olojebutu. Thank you, doctor, for being with us this morning. Thank you.